Hey guys, this is Mr. Finkelston. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to mix cyanotype chemistry. And then in a second video, I'm going to show you how to coat the paper and make an exposure with cyanotype. But let's just focus on the chemistry for right now. I want to show you a couple of options that you have uh, with the chemistry. One of them <clears throat> is to use this pre-mixed uh, for this is from a company called Jacquard and you can buy the powder in each of the bottles there's the A and the B and it comes with the bottle and the powder inside and you just add water and shake it up and you're ready to go so it's pre-measured and all of that that's a nice product uh, this is another one that comes from photographers formulary and it just has the powder in there and it's got a little kit um, I'm gonna show you how to mix your own chemistry from powdered uh, from powdered chemicals. So we're going to use, I'm going to put, put these out of the way here. We are going to use chemicals that I purchased at a place called Bostic and Sullivan, uh, which is online, just bostic-sullivan.com, and I'll give you some resources here at the end of the video. We're going to use two different chemicals. One of them is ferric ammonium citrate, that's this one here, and then the other one is potassium dichromate and that one is right here. Both of these chemicals are pretty inexpensive to buy. I think I got both of these things for about 50 or $60. This would make enough chemistry to last you a really, really long time, unless you're making really large cyanotypes or fabric, or depending on what your output is. But for most people, this, this chemistry would pretty, probably last you pretty much your lifetime. All right, so uh, those are the two chemicals. And the formula that we're going to use is uh, John Herschel's original formula. John Herschel is the person who invented the cyanotype uh, process. He also is one of the first, uh, I think was the first person to find the planet Saturn. And he also invented the fixative process. So John Herschel back in uh, the 1830s was very busy, busy guy. This is, um, this formula is out of a book called uh, The Book of Alternative Photographic Processes by Christopher James. Christopher James teaches at Lesley University in Boston. This is what is sometimes referred to as the Bible of alternative process. This is how I got started with alternative process and learned a lot of the different things uh, that I know with, with photographic processes. I started with this book. It's really outstanding. I would definitely recommend it. You can see mine has all kinds of markers and there's stains. It's, it's well used and well loved. I, I love that one. So that's where the, we're going to get the formula. I just, I also want to show you a couple of other books that are pretty good. This is one is uh, Jill Enfield's Guide to Photographic Processes, Alternative Photographic Processes. This is a really excellent book with lots of different processes in there. And then Christina Anderson's book on cyanotype. This is, I think, now the standard for cyanotype literature. It has everything that is currently known about cyanotype and probably more than you need to know, definitely more than you need to know to make, to make some decent cyanotypes. But if you really want to get into it, this is the book for you from Christina Anderson. Okay, I think we're about ready to go. Uh, I am going to make sure that I have goggles. They're also really cool. And uh, I'm gonna put some gloves on. You might also want to wear a mask when you're doing this. That's not a bad idea. I'm going to forego the mask today because uh, I want you to be able to hear me and understand me clearly. So I'm going to not use the mask. But that's not a bad idea uh, to use a mask. All right, these are nitrile gloves. I don't know if that makes any difference to anybody, but uh, you can get latex, or some people are allergic to latex. So these are nitrile gloves. Um, just protect my hands from the chemistry. You've got to be respectful of chemistry. This is not super harsh stuff. You, you don't want to ingest it, obviously. But if you get a little bit on your skin, wash it off really well, really quickly. Um, it's not like really costly. It's not like going to burn a hole in your skin or anything like that. Uh, but always want to be respectful of chemistry. Be careful and take precautions. Okay, so I have my chemistry. I have a couple of spoons that I'm going to use to dish out the chemistry onto the, onto the scale. I have just a pretty inexpensive electronic scale. I got this at uh, Brookside Toy and Science here in Kansas City, but you can, I'm sure you could get one on Amazon or, or wherever, a, a local science store, patron, patronize your local businesses. Uh, about $15 is really all you need to spend for a good electronic scale. 
I have some water on hand. We're gonna make 100 milliliters of each of these two chemicals and that should last quite a while. That would, 100 milliliters would make, gosh, I don't know, 25 to 50 uh, prints depending on the size. So that's gonna last you quite a while. And I also have some extra water here in case I need it. And I'll, I'll tell you what that's about here in a second. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix uh, the potassium ferrous cyanide. So I'm gonna use a piece of paper on my scale and that way it makes it easier. It's kind of a nice funnel. It's like a pre-made funnel to so just drop it right into the um, into the graduated cylinder. All right, turn my scale on. <clears throat> make sure it's at zero. Make sure that you tarry. If you put the paper on after you uh, oh, turn the scale on, you may have to tarry it. All right, and I'm gonna use 16 grams of the potassium ferrous cyanide. Now I kind of know from doing this how about how much that's going to be. That's 8 grams. That's 17. So I'm going to take a little bit off here. And that's 16 right there. Okay, set that off there. All right, so I mentioned that I, I have a little bit less than 100 milliliters of water in here. And the reason is that when I pour the chemistry in there, it's gonna raise the water level. So if I started off with 100 milliliters, I would actually end up with more than that. So I, I put about 80 in there, and then I'm going to put the chemical in. gently pour it in there and you can see it turns this kind of bright yellow color and I'm gonna mix it up put it all into solution <clears throat> I'm using some fancy science swizzle sticks but you could use a glass rod or uh, I like to use plant stakes that I can you can get at the garden center. They're really, really inexpensive and they're made of like a composite plastic that washes really well. You just want something that'll wash really well. Definitely plastic, glass, not wood. The wood will absorb the chemistry and you'll never get it out of there. Um, so wood is not a good idea to stir with, but if that's all you have, then go for it. Okay, so that's pretty close and as you, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not, it, that raised it up to about 90 putting the chemical in there. So I need to make 100. I'm gonna take a little bit of this extra water and I'm going to just add that till I get 100 milliliters, okay? I'm gonna let that sit and then I'll probably give it another good stir here after I've allowed that to dissolve a little bit. All right, set that off to the side there. And then the next one I'm gonna do is the ferric ammonium citrate. So I've got a separate piece of paper here. Just fold it in half. and my scale shut off so I'm going to turn it back on make sure it's at zero and I'm going to do 20 grams so this is a 20 percent solution or 2 percent solution sorry. no 20 percent I'm sorry my math is not so great alright so then we'll just addition this out here very, very powdery. That's a little over. Okay. And then I'm just going to pour that into the cylinder, just like I did with the uh, other chemical. This is pretty simple to do. You know, it's just a lot like making making tea, really. You're just kind of dissolving a powder into a liquid and making a solution. Like instant tea or instant coffee. 
except you don't want to drink this. All right, so that's a lot of chemical to go in there. And then again, I'm just going to top it off. All right, there we go. Probably a little much there. Okay, and then I have um, also some containers here. You can keep these chemicals in, it doesn't have to be a totally light safe container. These two chemicals are not light sensitive by themselves. They have to be mixed together. So I like to just use these uh, travel shampoo bottles. They have this little flip, flip cap so that later when you are combining the two chemicals together, you can just drop it out and it makes it really nice and, and easy. Uh, and these should last quite a while. I've had chemicals that I have mixed separately like that, and they are maybe a year old before I mix them, and they, they work just fine. But maybe have a little less contrast than fresh chemicals, but that's why I like mixing my own chemicals rather than using the kits, because I don't know how long those have been on the shelf. You know, even if they're just powdered chemicals, they might, they might be old. I don't know. They're probably not, but um, I just like to mix my own, and I know how long it's, it's been around. I know that I mixed it. Uh, you know, properly, and it just seems to work better for me. So that's that's it. That's that's mixing the the cyanotype chemistry. On the next video, I'm going to show you how to uh, work with the digital negative and coat the emulsion uh, onto a piece of paper and make a print. So we'll do that in the next video. All right, thanks guys. Appreciate it.